The Church of Eus Eleftherus Built in the 12th and 13th centuries, this is a favorite of local church connoisseurs. It's dedicated, as many Athenian churches are, to a popular saint, or Eus. The little church is sometimes referred to as the Old Cathedral, since it actually was once the cathedral. When the Ottomans took control in the 15th century, they evicted Athens' archbishops from their previous home, the Parthenon. They turned the Parthenon into a mosque, so the archbishop had to move into the humble little church you see here. Walk around the entire perimeter of the church and check out the decoration. It's a jigsaw puzzle hodgepodge scavenged from earlier buildings. Above the door, find the carved marble reliefs. These date from the 2nd century A.D. They were once part of a calendar of pagan Athenian festivals that stood in the ancient Agora. Besides crosses, you'll find other symbols, both Christian and pagan, carved rosettes, stars, flowers, and mythical griffins feeding on plants and snakes. Once you've checked out the exterior, consider stepping inside to sample its unadorned orthodox simplicity. There are even old tombstones incorporated into the building. These pagan elements combined with Christian symbolism to make the church a treasure trove of religious iconography. Adriano Street. This intersection may be the geographical, if not atmospheric, center of the neighborhood called the Placa. Touristy Adriano Street is the main pedestrian drag. Remember, back in the early 1800s, the Placa was basically all there was to tiny Athens. As you walk, you'll begin to see the ruins of Hadrian's Arch up ahead. They were built by the Roman Emperor Hadrian, or, as he was known in Greece, Adriano. While Roman, Hadrian loved all things Greek. The area just ahead was his planned neighborhood. It was known as, what else? Hadrianopolis. The Arch of Hadrian, a classic triumphal arch in the Roman style, marked the entrance to the emperor's planned community, Hadrianopolis. The arch was once brilliant white, made of the same pentelic marble as the Parthenon. It's now stained by exhaust from some of Athens' worst traffic. The arch is topped with Corinthian columns with their leafy capitals. Hadrian built the arch in 132 A.D. to mark the line between Greek Athens and the new Roman city. This arch must have been a big deal for Hadrian as the emperor himself came here to celebrate the inauguration. Now, look past the arch and see the huge, and I mean huge, Corinthian columns. This is all that remains of the Temple of Olympian Zeus. The Temple of Olympian Zeus is the largest temple in ancient Greece. It took almost 700 years to complete. It was begun in the 6th century B.C. by the Greeks, then lay abandoned, half-built for centuries. Finally, the Roman Emperor Hadrian arrived to finish the job in 131 A.D. The temple was huge. The fallen column, you see, like a tipped-over stack of checkers, was knocked over by a storm in 1852. This over-the-top temple was dedicated to Zeus, the king of the Greek gods who lived on Mount Olympus. The elegant marble Lysicrates Monument has Corinthian columns that support a dome with a statue on top. The statue is rather damaged. A frieze runs along the top. If you look close, you may be able to see that it represents Dionysus turning pirates into dolphins. The monument is the sole survivor of many such monuments that once lined this street. Here on this street, the ancient Oscars were awarded to winners of theatrical competitions staged at the nearby Theater of Dionysus. The Lysicrates Monument honors one of the winners, 
the winning coral team from the year 334 B.C. Excavations around the monument have uncovered the foundations of other monuments, which are now reburied under a layer of red sand, awaiting further study. Circling the Acropolis, view of Lycavitos Hill. Phew, after climbing that staircase... Ah, I wish I'd stayed with the losers and skipped the arch. I'm with you. As you walk along, on your left side is the Acropolis and a row of olive trees. Now look to your right, over the rooftops of Athens. You'll catch glimpses of another hill off in the distance. This cone-shaped mound is Lycavitos Hill. It's the highest hill in Athens, topped with a tiny white church at just over 900 feet above sea level. By comparison, the Acropolis is only 490 feet tall. The Lycavitos Summit, which can be reached by a funicular, has a restaurant and a view terrace. Although it looms high over the cityscape, like Avito's Hill will always be overshadowed by the shorter hill you're circling right now. Anafiotica As you enter the narrow lanes of whitewashed homes, don't worry about getting lost. Just keep following signs that point to Acropolis, even if the path seems impossibly narrow. You'll eventually emerge out the other side. Weave through narrow paths lined with flowers and dotted with cats. Cats dozing peacefully in the sunshine or slithering luxuriously past your legs. In this delightful spot, nestled beneath the walls of the Acropolis, the big city seems a world away. This neighborhood of Anafiotica was built by people from the tiny Cycladic island of Anafi. Some descendants of the original islanders still live here in Anafiotica, or Little Anafi but it's slowly becoming a place for wealthy locals to keep an island cottage right here in the city. Keep following the Acropolis signs. Peek into delicate little yards and enjoy the blue doors and maroon shutters. It's a transplanted, cycladic island world. 